My role or my job is I'm a biomechanical swing analyst. So over the last five years, we've used hardwire technology, uh, TPI, it's a golf technology, to do 3D video analysis and get this same readout of the kinematic sequence. All of our players, as we know, have a different ceiling. We're trying to max out that ceiling and that output to find their best bat speed. How we do that is making sure that the body is efficient in movement. Now we usually do that from a subjective standpoint. We use our experience, maybe using an iPhone or a tablet, and we do video analysis and we say, we think this is the best way you should be doing it. Or we're in a cage with a kid and we're just eyeballing it by ourselves and we're looking at an extremely fast explosive movement and giving them feedback swing by swing on how we think they should be swinging. Baseball has been taught subjectively for over 100 years. And now what we have is something in real time that's going to give us objective data at the moment that our swing is either efficient or inefficient. And it's going to tell us when it happened if it is inefficient. This is the best teaching tool that's come to us that, that really I've ever seen from a technology standpoint. So what we'll do here when we get into the cage is we're going to get a swing by swing readout of the efficiency of the player's kinematics. So I can see if our lower body is feeding into the core, feeding into the upper body, and eventually out the bat. We, this is very much different than a bat sensor. The bat sensor is telling us the story of what happened at contact, and we're all concerned about what's going on with that ball-bat collision. But what is determining that collision is exactly what you're going to see here. We have to rewind and find out what the body did to produce that said bat path. We'll just pick a swing here. And what you can see is the different parts of the data. So we've got the hands showing you the speed, the shoulders, the hip. And you'll see that they're um, each overlaid there. And then here's a, a picture that combines all of those together. Uh, so you can kind of see the, the kinematic sequence. And I'll let Justin talk a little bit about that. All right, for the, for, the major for the majority of our players that come into us, we know from the high school level, youth level, or even some collegiate kids, we're not always going to have our players in a correct swing sequence. So this is going to allow us to look swing by swing and find out whether we were efficient or inefficient, which becomes a teachable moment. We're no longer guessing. We now have objective data that tells us the moment the swing sequence broke down, and now we can attack that moment with drill work. In this particular case, we have a hitter that was in sequence. We're seeing the blue that the lower body peaked out in speed, and began to transfer energy into our torso or core while it trails off in speed and the torso begins to pick up its rotational velocity. Then we're going to transfer that energy into our arms and eventually out the barrel head. So if I have a player in sequence, we may still not have maxed out what his potential bat speed is. If he is in sequence, I'm going to say, can we filter more energy through the lower body that's going to transfer into the upper body, whether that's strength and conditioning work or something we want to work with him in the cage. However, the most common error you're going to see with your hitters is the shoulders or the torso is going to peak out in speed before your lower body does. And that's the, the classic, your shoulders pulling off. We're rolling the ball over at contact. How many times we heard a coach say, your head is pulling out, which is a direct byproduct of the shoulders opening up and rotating early. So that's going to tell us when that happened or if it happened during the swing. And now we have a correctable moment. Maybe it's the player's tempo is too fast and that's not allowing him to get into an upper body load with resistance against the lower body's want for momentum in turn. Or we just don't have an efficient upper body load, so the lower body and the upper body are firing at the same time, or even worse, the upper body is firing too soon. But whatever the case is there, it's no longer a guess. It's no longer subjective. I think you should do it this way. Now we know, and we know from the graph whether the player was rotating inefficiently or whether we were in sequence and we were maxing out our bat speed. Um, because video is a really powerful part of, of the coaching uh, tool set, we want to integrate these two together. And so we'll pull up a swing here and we can just hit play and what you'll see at the top is the data that's integrated with the video as it moves. So now you can start tying that subjective information that you have from the video with the objective data that we've gotten from the shirt. The other thing that you can do is you can, you can slow it down or you can scrub back and forth with your finger to that particular moment so you can see those data values at that particular moment in time.